and I was about to kill you. But since you apologize, please enjoy your time in Japan. These pranksters are going viral for harassing Asian people in Asia and in America. And honestly, it's just striking a chord with the community. So we're going to talk about these two viral clips. Yeah, we're talking about two different clips today. One was on the Tokyo subway. The other one is on a, in, on a beach in America. Let's run the clips. Nagasaki, you know why you do this? Pearl Harbor? Hiroshima, Nagasaki! Hiroshima, Nagasaki, you know why we do to you this? Hiroshima, Nagasaki, we destroy it because you don't know how to behave. Wallahi, 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 Wallahi. You don't understand our power. You don't understand. Hey, Wallahi, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, you know. You know Hiroshima, Nagasaki? We're gonna do it again. What? Hiroshima, Nagasaki. We do again. You're from America? Yes. So am I. You're from America? Yeah, you're being obnoxious. You know what we do to you? What do you do? We will do again. Do what? Hiroshima Nagasaki. You understand? Do you think I'm Japanese? Where are you from? I'm from America. Where are you from? What's your ethnicity? Texas, buddy. What's your ethnicity? I'm Korean. Then sit down, brother. Why don't you sit your ass? Korean War, you know what happened to you? Come on. Don't touch me. Obnoxious, brother. Don't touch me, Leave brother. Leave this guy alone. Korean War, North Korean War, you know what we do to you? Okay. You said to me? You better move on, man. Just, just calm down a little bit. You know what we do. CX, hashtag hey, CX. How many subs do you have? Bro, I'm at 1,000 subs right now. Nice. You know what I, you know, bro, I'm making money from this. Cool. Sit down, brother. Enjoy. Yeah, but I'm just saying. He, he Enjoy. Didn't, sit he down. Didn't know. He ain't do nothing to me. What? Sorry, I just seen you over here, and I just, like, thought I had to stop and just ask you if I could get your phone number. Yeah. Sorry. That's my husband. Oh. I appreciate it. I'm your husband. I thought you were like your gay best friend or something. What's going on? Take your f***ing camera and get the f*** out of here. It was just a joke, sir. You're bothering people. Why? Why? Yeah. You want us to call the cops? For what? You're harassing people. Was it because of my shirt? No. Dude, get out of here. Get hey, hey, hey you, you can't, you can't. No! He assaulted me. He took my mice, $600. Hey, you know, okay. Trespass from this car. Have you ever trespassed before? Yes. Shocking. Yeah. Banned from every Walmart in the world. Did everyone get trespassed or just us? Just the two. I'm sick of these pranksters, man. Everybody hit that like button. Check out more episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we talk about the comment section. And also, what are some other things that Asians could do or could have their kids do that might prepare them for more situations like this. I'm not an expert on it, but I have my thoughts. All right, let's get in the comments. Somebody said, you gotta be another type of clown to visit a country, get your passport ready just to be racist to those people. And Andrew, I gotta be clear here, Andrew. Logan Paul did this exact same thing too. Yeah, I think people like messing around in Japan because they know that Japanese are so calm and polite and clean They're and all organized. All about respect. And they are not a outwardly aggressive society for the most part. So of course you can get away with a lot of things. I do think Japan probably overall is tightening up on these things because the pranksters are ruining it. And guess what? You got to clamp down. You can't just have people running around disrespecting everybody like this. Somebody said, uh, oh, this was so disrespectful. It made me embarrassed and cringe as a fellow black person to watch him do this. I can't believe it. Yeah, obviously, I know why this person left this comment, but they don't have to speak up for all black people or whatever. I mean, this guy, like, there's also a bunch of comments that went down the rabbit hole of him being Somali, and that's different than this. Right, and that. right. He was, and was like, we don't claim him, and then yeah, you Don't worry. Like, you don't have to claim him. He's not claimed by anybody, okay? I'm, I'm sure a bunch of Somali Americans would be like, yo, I don't claim this guy either. Somebody said, uh, I was really hoping the Yakuza would take him on. And somebody said, yeah, how come he's picking on this guy in a nice suit who clearly has a white collar office job and has glasses on, probably typing on a computer all day. How come he doesn't pick on those tattooed Yakuza in Harajuku? And nobody ever picks on badass tatted up Asians anyway. The truth is pranksters don't dare to mess with people who outwardly seem intimidating. Now, I want to say partially it is a race thing on why these two clips happen, but I don't think it's only that. I think it's just that, I guess... These pranksters are reading these people and scanning these people as unintimidating. Right. But, however, there are people who actually go into the hood in America and prank people, but it's in a different way. They don't do it so the audience can watch them essentially bully or pick on somebody in a kiddie way or adolescent way. They do it to get an extremely 
uncalibrated violent response from the people in that environment. Yes, I've seen those clips. So too. those are so it's almost like you're picking on people expecting two completely different reactions. You're picking on Asians expecting that they'll turn the other cheek or get scared, and you're picking on it for the other way. Um, somebody said uh, I really applaud this Korean American tourist for standing up for the rest of the Japanese in the subway. Yeah, no, I thought the Korean American on the subway did a good job, and I actually think this Asian dude at the beach. Him throwing the mic, I thought was good. Better than hitting the kid. Mm. Taking the mic and throwing the mic into the water, ruining his equipment, was much better than actually hitting him because at the end of the day, you do want to watch out who you hit. Somebody said, uh, if you watch the later clips, and we'll play it, there's a Japanese guy who's more from the streets who chases down Johnny Somali in the streets of Tokyo in a motorcycle and confronts him. This causes Johnny Somali to get scared and back down and apologize. Yeah. So it goes to show you, even in a society, Andrew, as docile as, you know, Japan, you know, there are of distribution of people in society, right? You do have triads in the Chinese world. You do have Yakuza in the Japanese world in every Asian world, but it seems like that's not the dominant narrative of that group. Hey, right? what if he was like, oh, I am Yakuza and I was about to kill you, but since you apologize, please enjoy your time in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> no, it goes to show you that I think that it, this is, it goes into a whole nother issue, Andrew, where people are like, yeah, more Asians need to be badass and get tattoos. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. We, we do have that though, but it's just not a large portion of the Asian society. Every society we has We will that. discuss this at the end of the video. David, some comments said, at least ban his account. And actually, that is what's starting to happen. I noticed that these the video, particularly this specific video of him in Tokyo got taken down from all his platforms. It got flagged as uh, going against the community guidelines, of course. I do not think a lot of his videos are monetized on any platform. So he does have like Patreon. He's trying to get money from subscriptions from and donations fans. and things like that. And Absolutely, this content should not be monetized. I don't care if you're pranking people at the beach. I don't think, I don't even care if you're, walking up behind people at the grocery store, scaring them. I as just, far as freedom of speech goes, listen, when you start messing with random public strangers, I think that that is not your, you do not have the freedom to do that just because you're live streaming on your iPhone. No, live streaming is not an excuse to disturb, bother, and piss people off. Um, somebody said, I get it. He was a former child soldier in Somalia. This is a real confirmed fact, by the way. He's probably seen unbelievable pain and trauma and suffering and violence. I wonder if he needs counseling rather than try to take it out on random people. Yeah, uh, 100%. Maybe, you know, I'm sure he's dealing with a lot. I'm sure he's been through a lot. That doesn't excuse anything that he's done. He knows that it's wrong, but I think for him, he's just yoloing and he's like yo i got one life to live i'm traveling around asia i'm just bothering people maybe i'm nice to some of them and i'm not nice to some right. of them. a little bit like i show speed too, yeah. right like but, where he was like nice to some people really bad to some people yeah and you're just gonna watch me live my life and overall um i don't yeah. necessarily think he's the most evil person at all but i definitely think he's very juvenile and like the comment said he's probably justifying it by saying like Oh, the level of stuff I've seen, I've probably seen people kill each other and stuff like that. What I'm doing is not that bad comparison to that. But it's also wrong to expect that the public has to contextualize everybody's life experiences in every second of their behavior, right? Listen, if he was to get judged by an unbiased judge in a court, he would be wrong. He'd be wrong. Right. Uh, but like I said, this was a gigantic thread that opened up a whole nother thing that, you know, things. Somebody said, uh, man, I just wish all these pranksters got thrown in the ocean along with their mic pack. This is uh, referring to, obviously, the uh, the balding white YouTubers on the American beach. Right, right. And then also, uh, this guy is urging for online attacks and hackers to take over the accounts of pranksters, especially those who target Asians. First of all, I don't like any pranksters. I really do not support this content. I think it should be at least flagged on platforms platforms as in like there should be like a red bar that says this is a prank that is disturbing random strangers and blah 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 at least if not take down the videos i don't care what you're doing if you're pranking people i, I don't like honestly it. the platforms have to do more like i said i get it some people on the flip side are going to argue freedom of speech i'm just saying it's probably bad for society literally if you extrapolate the trends out it's not it's good for society. encouraging people to do stupid ridiculous rude embarrassing and harassing things for clout and money. And sometimes, Andrew, they know they're going to demonetize, but they care more about the clout. Exactly. Anyway, let's get into our takeaways, Andrew. Um, do you think that Asians are often stereotyped as docile, low testosterone, weak, whereas 
So people are like, oh, I'm not going to mess with those guys because something bad could happen to me. I could get beat up or whatever, whatever. Oh, let's go mess with these Asians because they look silly. They're going to, like, turn the other cheek. They don't even speak English. They're, they're NPCs. They don't even know what's going on. I mean, the real question is, David, do Asians need to look more intimidating? Um, it would work, but it's very difficult to ask that of a population that is Confucian or, like, or whether they like, you know like, what I mean? Like, what, what if the average <clears throat> Asian guy... And this is what a lot of people on the internet say, worked out more and then got like one visible tattoo. Right. Well, people say that you don't really see like street Asian guys that are associated, whether they're in the gang or like could pass as being in a gang, they often don't get messed with. It's usually more the computer type. Would you agree? Exactly, exactly. And uh, another question is, how do you raise kids who are not from like a wild, aggressive, I guess, culture. Well, they're not from the hood. Yeah, they're like, just, they don't grow up around this type of stuff. So how do you train people to handle altercations verbally without it being physical? I think there's the physical aspect, which is trained martial arts, strange self-defense. But then there's the other aspect of like verbal self-defense and having comebacks and uh, using your words yeah. and your awareness, you know? How do kids train this? I, I'm not sure. I remember... I was just a scared Chinese kid in school too because that was my upbringing and those are the reps I seen. I had some martial arts training, but I had a Cambodian friend who was really from the hood growing up. Um, shout out to him. And he, I'm not saying that I became like him, but just through seeing the way he lived his life and his interactions. And back then, everybody was getting robbed for sneakers. Like if you had Jordan 11s, it was like such a crazy thing. So I'm saying the way I saw him handle myself, himself, it gave me at least more reps in my mind to see you know right. what I'm saying? I, by the way, I, I don't know. I'm just bringing that story up. I, I'm not saying in 2023 that story is 100% relevant for youth or that they should follow, but that's what helped me out. Yeah, and I, and I think that overall Asians need to be more balanced. I think there's a healthy dosage of learning the physicality, being confident in your physical form, in your physical abilities. I'm not saying to become a savage, you got to fight everybody, but being just confident in your physical form and then also being confident in your mind. And that is actually going to help Asians in a lot of different aspects. Yeah. I'm not saying we can all stop every prankster or every person who's going to pick on Asians forever. There's right. nothing on you camera, can do. off camera. There is right? nothing you could do. There's nothing you can do to really stop that. You can decrease the numbers, but what you can encourage people to do is feel confident multiple ways, mentally yeah. and physically. I and will. you have to train both and do drills of both. So whether it's playing basketball and handling interactions in basketball and verbal altercations and arguing in basketball, which is a sport that is just full of a bunch of interactions, by the way. It's rep training. Yeah. I mean, you know, it used to always infuriate me. And after Stop Asian Hate and a couple things in the past three to four years, it's changed a lot. I remember in Chinatown, uh, and in Chinatown, but specifically NYC, if there was a non-Asian walking on the street, usually tourists or whatever, uh, especially, you know, to be honest, yeah, they, they would never move for the Chinatown locals. A lot of tourists would feel comfortable taking up 70, 80, 90% of the sidewalk, and they would even make a local old Asian lady who lived in Chinatown move to the side or hide in a nook while they walk by. I don't see it as much nowadays, but I remember that used to infuriate me so much and wish that I could matrix download some sort of like firmware update into all Asians' brains, specifically Chinese people. To be honest, I think the two guys that stood out, stood up in these two incidents were Korean. And I do think, Andrew, there is even variable cultural training depending on what type of Asian you are, right? Yeah, and I think it's, it's also family to family and how you train your kids and raise your kids. And honestly, America is a country that is a lot about street interaction. Whether it's more than you think, whether it's at school, in the schoolyard, the playground, the street, the college, the bar, the subway, whatever yeah. it is, you there is a way that you can at least somewhat train and prepare yourself for these things. And it doesn't mean you have to out fight everybody. It doesn't right. mean you have to out buff everybody, but you got to be a little bit more balanced. And I think that's where a lot of Asians are leaning towards. Yeah, right now. I do think so. there's a lot more D measuring T as in testosterone D. You yeah. can guess what D stands for and M, which is muscle measuring in America. than a lot of Asians, obviously from an Asian society yeah. or enclave are are accustomed to. So between the platforms, the online platforms, demonetizing these types of videos and discouraging people from creating them, okay, pushing them down in the algorithm or just taking them off the internet. And then also Asians being a little bit more balanced and more trained physically and mentally because they both run together. Because if you're not confident physically, you're not going to be as confident mentally. Mm -hmm. So 
Doing both those things, I think, is going to help. But I'm not an expert. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. I think this is multi-layered. I'm not saying everybody, anybody should attack anybody. But I'm just saying, uh, bringing it up, man. Keep it civil in the comments section. What do you guys think of our recommendations and about these incidents? Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.